Hey, welcome back. Let's look at Exodus chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, and see what happens next. I assume you were with us yesterday morning, so we're just going to leap in here. But when she could hide him no longer, she got him a wicker basket and covered it with tar and pitch. Then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. So we won't get her name until chapter 6, but her name, the, the name of Moses' mother, of course, is Jochebed. She's hid her baby in defiance of the national death decree on Hebrew males for three months. And now she's going to leap into even more action. She acquires a basket, she prepares it so that it won't leak, and then she figures out the right place to put it. She's going to position it out there uh, somewhere along the edge of the river. She instructs their oldest child, Miriam, about what to do, and the table is set. What's going to happen? And here we come to that place where presumably there are some pieces that really haven't been uh, put in here. You know, I mean, if all the, all the details were in the Bible, we would, we would have a really long book. I thought that was a pretty long book. But I think there's some details here that we don't have. Perhaps they were watching, and perhaps Pharaoh's daughter's uh, practices were known. Perhaps they knew that at a certain time each day, she would go to this certain place, and she would bathe out there by the river. Perhaps they knew all this, and they knew that she tended to be at a certain place at a certain time. And this seems to be part of a plan that, that perhaps God gave to Jochebed. And it could be that sometimes Pharaoh's daughter was overheard talking with her, her maids, and perhaps she was talking about she wanted to have a child or this or that or, you know, we, we, we really don't know. But uh, somehow they're going to try this out and this is a, a wild shot, but we're going to see what happens. And so what's a lesson for us here? Uh, Jochebed has some strong lessons for us. You know, and she did not resign herself to inactivity. Oh, well, you know, I've got two kids. We'll just let the third one be slaughtered. No, uh, it's impossible. How can I save the kid? I mean, the whole nation's against me. I guess I'm just give up. No, no, and no. And so here's a woman who does not uh, settle for inactivity. She is going to try to save this child some which way. And uh, that tendency we might have also to resign ourselves to inactivity. It's too late. Well, look, the government's going to give us digital dollars and we'll all just be stuck. There's no hope. How are we going to do anything when we have digital dollars? Because, you know, digital dollars really is when the government has its eyeball on every single thing you spend money on, that sounds an awful lot like, you know, the, the end game. That's, that's the end. I mean, what after that, what, do you, what can you do? But let's not give up on anything. Let's recognize that God is on his throne still. Yes, Pharaoh's on his throne, but God is on his throne. And here's a woman who's setting us an example of, this might sound like kind of, you know, a very wild, long, you know, very long throw of the football and maybe unlikely to be caught. But she's doing that, and we're going to see tomorrow morning what happens. The mother of this child sets the ark there, the little ark among the reeds. And that brings us to tomorrow morning. See you then.